More history is being made each and every day, so how is a history noob like me supposed to catch up? Well, fortunately, Oversimplified has been incredible in helping me with you know, World War I, II, the Russian Revolution, and today, we're marching forward again with the Cold War. Welcome back, friends, and a special welcome. Welcome to all the new friends out there. I'm Yo BGS, and I wanted to give extra special props today to Everyone who's been recommending these history channels to me, you know, oversimplified, overly sarcastic productions, Sam Manella, and so many others, because I've been having so much fun making these, and I'm trying to get to everyone's recommendations as quick as possible, but there have been so many of them, and they all seem really, really cool. Oversimplified has been by far one of my favorites to this point, and I gotta believe if the Cold War is anything like the other ones we've seen, it's gonna be unbelievable. Now, I do wanna let you know a large percentage of people who watch my channel are not subscribed, so if you dig these history kind of videos, make sure to subscribe. That's the easiest way to let me know you wanna see more of them. Here we go, oversimplified part one of the Cold War. I've decided that in order to sell more merch, I should do a f Okay, I was not expecting a face reveal straight out of the gate here. Face reveal, wearing some of it. So are you ready? Here we go. Boom. New mm. You know, funnily enough, that's not the voice I expect uh, on the other side of, or that's not the face I expect on the other side of this voice, but Oversimplified hasn't lied to me yet, so, and some Squidward. Minimalist and Cold War merch available now, and get the new limited edition Churchill character pin before it sells out, with more characters coming in the future. Link in the description down below. So is that, that must have been Churchill on the thumbnail then. The year is 1917. Ugh. Fighting rages on the Eastern Front. Oh, after everything I've seen, I hear 1917 and my soul just like drops a little bit because I'm like, oh boy, here we go again. The World War. Both Germany and Russia are on the brink of collapse. Soldier, I need you to bring me this man. Got it. Found him, sir. What? No, no. John, uh... <laughs> Vladimir Lenin, not John Lennon. Lenin? Lenin, the Russian communist. What? Why would I need a beetle? Lenin, the Russian communist. He was exiled to Switzerland. You know what? I'll do it myself. <laughs> Crapitalism? <laughs> Kool-Aid man. Who wants to start a revolution? It's my time to shine. Oh my god, come on! A little dramatic, don't you think? We just got through the Russian Revolution. I'm like, I don't need a refresher on all of this. The German I'm sorry, if anyone's Russian and watching, that's probably offensive. Let's put Lenin on a train and sent him all the way back to Russia, hoping he and his mates would create an internal crisis. And create an internal crisis I recognize crisis this. They did. The government was overthrown, and Lenin was in charge. He immediately pulled out of the First World War, made the country communist, started a three-year-long civil war, got shot, broke the economy, caused a famine, and then he died. On but then why did I need to watch the Russian Revolution? If this was, like... If, if the Cold War was going to start with the TLDR of the Russian Revolution... On his deathbed, he said, Hey man, tell whoever's in charge of giving people jobs not to let that jerk Stalin become the next leader. This is literally... This is... We're literally getting last time on Dragon Ball Z here. By the way, who did I put in charge of giving people jobs? Stalin. That would be Stalin, sir. <sighs> <laughs> Stalin was a rising force in the Communist Party. He still had some opponents, but conveniently, all of them were arrested or disappeared. So that was lucky. And so Stalin took over. He implemented his five-year plans, which transformed the country from an agriculture-based economy to an industrial one. And like Lenin before him, he reigned with terror. Anyone who dared criticize or oppose him would either be killed or left to rot in the horrendous Soviet work camps. Then a short man with a silly mustache tried to take over the world, punched the Russians all the way to Moscow, Dude, one of the coolest effects on Oversimplified's channel, and I know I don't talk a lot about, like, because cause we get so into the history and everything going on that I forget to do the meta of, like, talking about what we're seeing, but this effect right here... Billy Mustache tried to take over the world, punch the Russians all the... That is so damn cool. I, like, every time somebody does that, granted, it usually results in thousands of people dying, but, like, 
God, it looks cool! Went to Moscow, and then the Russians, with some help from their faithful ally, the Winter, punched them all the way back to Berlin. See? At this point, How can being you allies, that? America, the UK, and the Soviet Union were good chums. They held a couple of conferences near the end of the war to decide what would happen next. Hey, Stalin, after all your trials and tribulation, you must be pretty happy to be standing here in Berlin. Tsar Alexander made it all the way to Paris. Uh, hey, uh, j just give me a second. Hey, man, I think something's up with Stalin. I know, right? What should we do? Shall I tell him about the bomb? No! Do no! Yeah, tell him about the bomb. Oh. That will scare him. So, we got this crazy new big A-bomb that can destroy an entire city in one go. No! Oh. Okay, so he's gonna yeet himself out of the room and go build thousands of those. Yes, my spies told me already. Oh wait, I meant to act surprised. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> he already knew. How? Um... Am I sure I want to send nuclear secrets via unsecure public coffee shop Wi-Fi? Am I ever? <laughs> Am I ever? <laughs> this is the most excited oversimplified gets, by the way. Secure public coffee shop Wi-Fi. Am I ever? Dude, use a VPN and speak. Wait a minute! Wait just just a jump down minute here. Speaking of VPN. Although granted, it took until the big it's sponsor time words came up on the screen and for me to recognize. If, like me, you take internet safety seriously, then you need anonymously and securely. Say, for example, you say, for example, you say, 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 for example, say, for example, you fway cross, fway cross, fway cross the tablet, 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 well, and tablet. See, mo, see, mo, see, see, mo, see, mo, see, see, mo, see, mo, see, see, mobile, and tablet. I mean, that was a cool little remix. I do love the NordVPN character. I will give oversimplified props for that. That is one of the, like, Building the logo into blue hair as somebody who typically has blue hair. Go to nordvpn.com slash oversimp month with an additional month free. F so again, so again, so again, so again, so again. That's nordvpn.com slash oversimplified also in the description box down below. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, this is the only channel where you can go from a chipper conversation about a VPN to so where were we? The entire control of the free world and a, a, a piece of blueprint that says big A-bomb. Does the A stand for atomic or ass? Then America dropped their big A-bomb on Japan and World War II officially came to an end. Hooray, we won. Okay, so now it's time to establish the new world order. Stalin, you're in charge of Eastern Europe. Now we want you to let them all hold elections. Oh yes, of course, elections. And these elections will be free and fair, right? Oh yes, certainly, free and fair. Definitely free and fair. Oh. Communist, 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 communist. If that's not free and fair, I don't know what is. Throughout Eastern Europe, Soviet puppet- It's like... Obviously the discussions didn't go exactly like that, right? But they had to know what Stalin was doing in Russia, right? They had to know what Stalin was up to. And the fact that if you allowed him to conduct an election, that's what was gonna happen. Like, America had spies, England had spies. That's part of how we won the war. Britain was really smart. So, governments were. But I guess the other part of it was just they couldn't. You know, the U.S. and and British armies couldn't couldn't manage all of this. So. Maybe it was established just a as a buffer zone between the USSR and the West, with Churchill proclaiming an iron curtain had descended across the continent. The relationship between the old allies was deteriorating fast. Over the next few years, the British intervened in the Greek Civil War to prevent a communist takeover. In Turkey, the Russians began demanding more control of Turkey's sea axis routes, which prompted the US to send their largest battleship to Turkey for a friendly visit. After World War II, Iran was now occupied by both the Soviets and the British, with an agreement to both pull out once the war was over. The British pulled out, Stalin was like, you know what? I think I might stick around. All in favor of kicking Russia out of Iran? You want to know something? You guys suck. Pressure from the UN forced the Soviets to leave. So basically, Iran has very rarely had a chance to be like a united situation. You know what I'm saying? Because like, all right, that's after World War II. And now we're already seeing a power vacuum here. And I feel like over the next 80 years, we just get tons of, they come in, US comes in, everyone else comes in, they set up their things, then they get booted out, then they come in, then they leave, and 
then we give them things that fall into wrong hands. So then we give other people things to fight the things we gave the other people. And, with the establishment of and that's just sort of the way it's gonna be. In NATO, the Soviets had no doubt that the West was out to encircle and destroy them. And America announced the Truman Doctrine, in which they basically said, those guys are not cool, cannot be trusted, and we will do everything we can to prevent the spread of communism around the world. Many view this moment as the official declaration of the Cold War. Back in Europe, everyone was living in a post-apocalyptic void brought on by the Second World War. Cities reduced to- Again, I would be remiss to not... Rat on a stick... Boil... <laughs> Boiled shoes? Apocalyptic void brought on by the Second World War. Cities reduced to rubble, not enough food. It was terrible. This is great. The more they suffered, the more likely it is they'll turn to communism. Dude, you're really messed up. What's wrong with you? My father used to punish me severely. America realized what was going on and quickly made a move. Under the Marshall Plan, they sent 12 billion- Unrelated again, but where does this- This- And quickly made a move- You know what I'm talking the... about? The- Banana, 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 boom, boom. What is that from? I've heard that now in like three videos. Also, yes, really messed up. What's wrong with you? My father used to punish me severely. America realized what Sick was going reference. on and quickly made a move. Under the Marshall Plan, they sent $12 billion to Western Europe for its economic recovery. The countries of Stalin's Eastern Bloc looked on with envy. Hey, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Wait a minute, did Czechoslovakia look at Eastern Bloc looked on with envy. Hey, Czechoslovakia. No, it just, the, I, the pupil changed there. You want to come get some economic aid? Yeah, but I have to check with my mom first. Oh, come on. <laughs> Sorry, America. I can't come. This was a full-on economic battle raging between capitalism and communism in Europe. If the Western nations developed faster and better than the East, that would be a defeat for Stalin. So he set up his own rival economic recovery plan, which he called Comic-Con, and he also set up- No, Comic he Ford. didn't! No freaking way! Recovery plan, which he called- No, he did not- I mean, I, I'm, I'm positive that Comic-Con was not this, but- I mentioned this on my stream the other day, how just you never know how badly the things that you talk about are going to age, even if you talk about really benign things. Like, there's no way anyone knew that Comic-Con was going to become this. Well, Comic-Con, and he also set up Common Form, which gave him more political control over the Eastern Bloc. But nowhere did this economic battle rage harder than in the city of Berlin. Caught over a hundred miles behind Soviet lines, the city had been divided up between the Allies, and the Western segments were still under oh, Western weird. control. East Berliners could travel freely to West Berlin, see the economic prosperity, and think, hmm, maybe this communism thing ain't so great after all. I'm gonna have fun tonight. Oh, come on, man! You're home late. Oh, Stalin. I was just out with my friends. Friends? You stink of capitalism! You're out engaging in imperialist debauchery again! I swear, Ivan, I can't keep doing this. Stalin wanted the West out, so he said, Hey, guess what? I'm blockading all of your supply routes to West Berlin. What are you gonna do about it? I suppose we'll just fly the supplies in. Impressive. All right, Truman. You in this round. The Berlin airlift was an incredible undertaking and a major success for the West. 277,000 flights. It is incredible. Like, it's a shame that we can't mobilize for good. You know what I mean? Like, we're able to mobilize militarily for so much. Again, 277,000 flights of supplies. Now, imagine if we could do that in other areas, and I know... It's obviously a utopian thing to say because that requires money. And, allies. and, who's and Stalin pay? ended his blockade of West Berlin. His aggressive actions worried the West, but not as much as this did. Yeah. The Soviet Union had developed their very own atomic bomb. The USA no longer had a nuclear monopoly. The world now knew that if a major war broke out between the two superpowers, it would be more destructive than anyone could imagine. So it was comforting when Stalin came out and said that war between the Soviet Union and the West was unlikely. Oh, wait, inevitable. He said what? it was inevitable. What? What? And then you got Lenin in the background here. No other side characters. I thought he would say it was unlike. Oh, well, of course he would say it's inevitable. He's military guy hey you know who i haven't checked in on in a while my good friend china whoa 
What happened to you? What? What happened to them was a full-blown civil war that had been going on since 1927. The People's Liberation Army, under the leadership of Mao Zedong, successfully defeated the Republic of China, who fled to Taiwan. The now communist China and the Soviet Union signed a mutual defense treaty. This was terrible news for the West. So I, um, I, I'm a big fan of watching the Olympics, right? The parade of nations, the commentators, they give you little factoids about each country. They're overly patronizing and it's really kind of stupid. But ultimately, they inevitably talk about Taiwan uh, because Taiwan, well, I think it's called Chinese Taipei in the Olympics, but they have to broach that subject. And I have learned more about how Taiwan in the last like 15 seconds than I have in probably 20 years of watching Olympic coverage and hearing them babble without saying anything politically charged. But wait, like I, I feel like I actually, if I learned nothing else out of this video, that was, that was some knowledge that caught me out of the blue. There's more. After the Second World War, Korea was divided along the 38th parallel. In the north, the Soviets set oh, up a communist dear God. regime. In the south, America set up an anti-communist regime. Both were led by very sweet looking old men, but don't let that deceive you. They were both ruthless dictators and both dreamed of reuniting Korea under their own regime. Now that he had the bomb, Stalin was feeling a little more cocky and he finally gave Kim permission to attack. The North launched a surprise invasion of the South on June 25th, 1950. With Soviet aid, the North Koreans steamrolled through, taking Seoul in just three days and replacing one ruthless dictator with another. The why? Well, I mean, I guess it's because they weren't expecting them to be different countries, but it's like, why would you set up your capital so close to the border? And yeah, it looks like the UN Security Council is. What country is looking like a California raisin down here? Asking for a friend. The UN were freaking out and quickly created an emergency force made up of troops from 16 countries to defend the South. The West still held Busan and made landings at Incheon near Seoul. They pushed the North Koreans out of Seoul, replacing the ruthless dictator that had replaced the first ruthless dictator with the same ruthless dictator that had previously been replaced by the new ruthless dictator. And the West then continued- Meanwhile, the Who wrote a song, Come Meet the New Boss, Same as the Old Boss. Continued all the way up the Korean Peninsula. At this point, China was getting worried that the UN may just keep going. The US had sent this guy to lead the operation. After winning the Pacific Theater of World War II, General Douglas MacArthur's head was big and his balls were bigger. He reassured President Truman that there was absolutely no Dear way- Dear God, you t look at this. This is a manly man right here. And I'm only talking about, again, I'm talking about the oversimplified character because, you know, I am a history noob, right? I don't want to say that, oh, MacArthur is such and such, because then everyone will flood me in the comments letting me know that, no, he really isn't. What, is this Taft back here? It looks like an overly overweight uh, individual. ...that the Chinese would ever get involved. Meanwhile, half a million Chinese troops were crossing into Korea. Nuke them. No. Nuke what? Them. No. Ah, oh, come on. What? You're fired. The U.S. considered the nuclear option, but now that the Soviets also had the... See what I'm saying? about being a manly man and why I didn't want to get too, I didn't want to back that horse too Bomb. much. They didn't want to risk all out global destruction. The communists pushed the West right back almost to the exact same spot they had all started from. And they ended up in a stalemate where they remained until both sides finally agreed to work towards a peace settlement in 2018. Back. Who's, what's David Letterman doing? Why is David Letterman hugging? What? Cause that's not, I'm very confused right now. Okay, that's not Letterman. I don't know what I'm seeing here. He settlement in 2018. Now I'm even more confused and slightly aroused. Back in America, Americans decided they wanted a new president who would be tough on communism. So they elected famed World War II general Eisenhower, who is really hard to draw. It's 1953. Got the same haircut. Hey, Stalin. How you doing? Oh, he's dead. He had a <laughs> cerebral hemorrhage and his reign of terror kind of came back to bite him in the ass because he had imprisoned all of his best doctors and those that were left were too terrified to try. Please enjoy your definitely not poisoned food and drink. But it seems like that's not... Oh, dear God, this turkey. We've got some boiled shoe. Nice little calm, nice little callback. A little bit of sushi. Some ribs. A, a jar of pickles. Maybe this contributed to some of his... situation. Right? Because wouldn't bleeding on your brain affect your mood somewhat? Reign of Terror kinda came back to bite him in the ass because he had imprisoned all of his best doctors and those that were left were too terrified to treat him. The new leader, Nikita Khrushchev, called a meeting and said, Hey guys, you know how Stalin was imprisoning and murdering us all for doing basically nothing? Let's do more yeah, of that. he was kind of a jerk. I'm really not sure how this is news to you. Khrushchev went on a campaign of de-Stalinization. 
Statues of Stalin were taken down, Stalingrad was renamed, and Khrushchev announced that he wanted the Soviet people to be happy and would allow greater freedom in the Soviet Union. So how did that work out? While an uprising in East Germany was brutally suppressed, a revolution in Hungary was brutally suppressed, and demonstrations in Poland were brutally suppressed although he did finally allow some mild reforms. Back in the Soviet Union, he permitted more cultural expression, but then began banning stuff based on his own personal taste. Modern art looks like a child urinated on a canvas. Banned. Yeah, but like it does though. I mean, you should still be allowed to make it, but like- Jazz music sounds like the feeling of needing to fart. Banned. Did he really say that? Or is oversimplified taking some liberties here? Your poetry is really depressing. How could anyone in the Soviet Union be depressed? You're banned. Khrushchev wanted the Soviet people to be happy, but not like that, or that, or that. Did he ban braces? Asking for a friend. Young people began enjoying abhorrent Western pop culture. Son, remove that disgusting imperialist apparel at once. Shut up, dad. You can't tell me what to do. Well, would you look at that? Turns out he can tell me what to do. Oh, damn. The West had initially liked the cut of Khrushchev's jib, but world events soon soured relations even more. The two sides were spying on each other a whole lot throughout the Cold War. The KGB had spies and informants in nearly every aspect of Western life and government, so much so that whenever the US tried to send spies into the Soviet Union, the KGB were usually ready to arrest them on the spot. Members of the Manhattan Project aided the Soviet Union in acquiring the bomb. Some American officials believed they were on the wrong side. I'll sell you three secrets for five million dollars. Okay. Go ahead. The Allies are digging a tunnel under East Berlin to tap your communications. There's an American agent living at this address in Moscow, and sometimes, when I'm home alone, I like to put on my wife's dresses, sit in the corner, and cry for hours. That is a nuclear secret, I suppose. But being involved in creating the first weapons of titanic mass destruction you know, it might be a little bit stressful, so uh, I'm not I'm not going to judge that decision. I'm just going to say that, you know, we all need healthy ways of uh, venting frustration. Very interesting. In America, fear took hold during the Red Scare and the McCarthy trials. American values imploded as fear of communism collided. Oh, this is the part of time where they're like, ah, everybody's a red. I thought Timmy was a red, so I sold him out to the government. With freedom of thought and expression, and communist kind of became a buzzword thrown around to describe anything people didn't like. Hollywood? Communist. Your next door neighbor's dog? Communist. When the grocery store cashier asks if you need a bag when you clearly can't carry 10 tubs of bacon in your hands? Communist. But one area in particular- And see, now we have- Everybody does that? Well, I guess socialist replaced communist and fascist replaced communist for the other side. And now instead of just everybody calling, yeah, or instead of group A just calling group B one thing, now group B is also calling group A something. And you know, it, good times were had by all if you're watching this in the future. Where the US had an edge over the Soviet Union was in its espionage technology. In particular, U-2 spy planes flew across Russia carrying out surveillance from the skies. There was a nasty incident in- You know, I gotta believe that the U-2 spy plane would have been a pretty poor, right? Because if this thing's flying over, they're gonna hear it because instead of carrying out normal plane noises when it flies over, it go, hello, hello, and then you look up and you're like, what the in hell particular, is that thing? In particular, U-2 spy planes flew across Russia carrying out surveillance from the skies. There was a nasty incident in 1960 though, when one was shot down and Khrushchev was furious. Who the hell is this? He's a high altitude weather enthusiast who flew off course. Okay, that sounds plausible. Wait a minute. <laughs> what does he have a gun and a poison needle? Because he's a very naughty high altitude weather enthusiast. <laughs> But much to America's concern, the Soviet Union appeared to be ahead in the space race. Everyone freaked out when Russia launched the world's first satellite, and then they actually sent a man into space. Even worse, there also appeared to be a missile gap in the Soviets' favor, and Khrushchev was so confident that he even allowed the US to set up a technology exhibit in Moscow, attended by a certain vice president, Richard Nixon. Check this out, we have colored TV. Yes, but we've been to space and can obliterate you with our massive nuclear arsenal. Uh-huh. It's like a potato. Hang on. We got to check these out here. I, I like I'm such a fan of background gags. It's like a potato, but it has a face. What the a freaking telephone. Yo, talk to someone in a different room. Color TV. The people aren't actually in the box. A slightly larger hand whisk. It's an average whisk, but it's not the average size. Word. We got a hot dog. Real meat producers hate this product. The fidget spinner, say what? Spider baby, the body of a spider, but the mind of a baby. 
and then just the American National uh, Exhibition there. However much credit oversimplified gets, it's not enough. And yes, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not understating. Check this out. We have color TV. Yes, but we've been to this. space and can obliterate you with our massive nuclear arsenal. Check out this vegetable peeler. Tensions increased further when both sides upgraded their atomic bombs to hydrogen bombs. And after West Germany was allowed to join NATO in 1955, Khrushchev set up the Defense of Warsaw Pact, strengthening the military ties between the Soviet Union and its satellite states. It's fascinating because I've heard, you hear all of these terms bandied about, right? I used to listen to talk radio every day when I was working in accounting and wanted to do anything but do accounting work. And you know, you hear all these terms bandied around and usually people are using them to call someone else names. I don't think I'm breaking any new ground there, but you don't really know what they are. Even if you Wikipedia them, you don't really understand the implications. So to see these videos and to get like this perspective on everything, it's it's really cool. The military I'm, gl I'm glad you guys are along uh, for the journey there. ...between the Soviet Union and its satellite states. In 1960, Americans decided they wanted a new president who would be tough on communism, so they elected John F. Kennedy. The Soviet Union was advancing its technology, but it was also bleeding its... Again, mainly because the whole religious thing. Like, I heard from my grandparents who were not Catholic that him being Catholic, like, confused people and i guess that's putting it lightly but yeah it seems like that would have been a more divisive decision than anything else the soviet union was advancing its technology but it was also bleeding its coffers dry and all of the money was going towards the military not the people life under communism was still Jogger. as hard as ever and berlin remained a thorn in the soviet side the contrast between the economically prosperous west and the struggling east was clearer day by day and east berliners were still able to freely travel to the west now, many of them were deciding to stay there. Build Millions defected to West Germany via West Berlin, causing Eastern factories to lose workers and taking a heavy toll on the economy. Soviet leaders decided this couldn't continue any longer. First, Khrushchev tried this. Leave West Berlin, or else. Or else what? Or else, I'll be really mad at you. Yeah, no, we're gonna stay. Listen, man, West Berlin is ours, East Berlin is yours, that's just how it is. Kennedy felt pretty good about his show of American resolve, but wait a second, did you catch that? Let's replay it. East Berlin is yours. I'm so cool. Uh-oh, Kennedy just told Khrushchev that the USA wouldn't interfere in what the Soviets did oh! with their section of Berlin. Didn't think about that. Berlin. So Khrushchev came up with a new idea. We're gonna build a wall, and it's gonna be a big, beautiful wall, and it's gonna keep out all the Mexicans. Wait, what? These Berliners. Oh, sorry. It's gonna keep in all the Mexicans. <laughs> On August. <laughs> yes. This is one of the fewest actual face palms I remember from an oversimplified character. It's gonna keep in all the Mexicans. On August 13th, 1961, Berliners woke up to find their city divided into two, with barbed wire and guards blocking the border between east and west. Over time, a wall was constructed throughout the city. Families were torn apart. Thousands would risk their lives escaping over the wall, and hundreds would die trying. To the despair of Berliners, the West were unable to do anything about it, but the wall did put on full display the failure of the communist system. As when's, when's the next video? Be yourself, upload more videos. No more economic downturn. Oh dear, did that say punish me severely? As Kennedy said, democracy is not perfect, but we have never had to put a wall up to keep our people in. As part of the agreement between the two sides, US diplomats were still allowed to travel to East Berlin, but suddenly East Berlin crossing guards started giving them the business and Kennedy was like, nah. -uh. In October, the US rolled tanks up- Ah uh, yes, John F. Mutombo, everybody remembers his favorite. Ich bin ein uh, uh, uh. Crossing point at Checkpoint Charlie as a show of strength. The Soviets did the same, and the two were in a standoff. They stayed like that for 16 hours, and the world braced for nuclear Armageddon. Thankfully, though, Kennedy called Khrushchev directly and was like, Hey man, this is getting way too hot. How about you back your tanks up by an inch and we'll do the same? Sounds good. Okay, how about you back your tanks up by another inch and we'll follow suit? All right, hey, you want to do another inch? And they both very slowly inched away from the apocalypse. Is that serious? Yeah. Let me know in the comments, is that like it actually came down to, we'll back up an inch? Because again, unfortunately, downside of, of being a dude, there's that macho guy thing, right? Where you don't want to be the first one to back down. It was a show of weakness, all that kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, being the bigger person often involves taking the first step. But did it really come down to inches like that?
And I'm hoping in part two we get into some more of those, the people who read like a, a, a radar that looked like a nuclear missile, but in actuality it was like a pigeon and nuclear war was avoided, don't, ah, avoided by like literally that much. Let's hope that's the biggest crisis of my presidency. It wasn't. No. All right, so sounds like we're uh, not going to get the happy-go-lucky end to all of this that I'd been hoping for. I'm letting it play through to the end. I'm going to see if there's any little Easter eggs here. I don't think there's going to be. So I got to check out part two, right? I mean, you guys always tell me that the second I watch part one of something, the next part is you got to watch part two, like, right away. And I tell you, I'm just getting, like... Not exhausted, but you you really do when you binge history stuff almost get like jaded to it. You know what I mean? It's just amazing how everything seemed to explode like right away. And I know obviously this took place over a matter of years because we're up into the 60s now and the video started in 1917, but it's just wild to see that there's never really a point in time in which everybody's hands are to themselves. You know what I mean? Like nobody's ever tied up in one area just doing their thing. Everybody's always invading everybody else and it's just a giant mess. But uh, that is gonna do it for this video, Oversimplified the Cold War Part 1. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Please consider subscribing. Take care and I will see you in part two.